Uh, you know, this one feels different. Joining us right, mm-hmm. right, joining us right now uh, from the Athletic, uh, the one, the only, the 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 the, the kindest guy in, in the business, Matt Barrows. Good morning, Matt. Shut up, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Ah, well done, Matt. Oh, well, beautiful Monday. <laughs> How are you? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, a lot at stake. Although you can make the argument that this is as much as pressure as there is for the 49ers to win tonight. Um, it's the least pressure filled of the of the four games they played uh, the last two seasons. I yeah. would 100 yeah. percent agree with that. Yeah, this is uh, you, you never, and this is a home game uh, against the Rams. So they, they not that that necessarily has made a difference. The Rams got the best of them last year and went on and uh, did some fun things. Uh, I, okay, the dumb sports radio question, Matt, is going to be: Do you expect Jimmy to, to do better? Uh, let me make it a, a real question. If you do expect Jimmy Garoppolo to play better in this game, would you mind expanding as to why you think that will be the case? Well, I mean, I, the, the main reason is that he was so bad uh, against Denver that I, I think he has to be better. Um, the question I have is, you know, how quickly can you make up for what he was saying was the issue, which is, hey, I didn't, I didn't play in the spring and the summer. Um, and you know, my arm is still kind of working its way back from that surgery. Those are, those are major elements. So I don't know if one, we can do that. Um, I think that the game plan will, will address that. I mean, you go back to the 2020 season and we should note that whenever the 49ers have needed a win to kind of get going again, they've, they found the Rams on their schedule and they usually beat the Rams and, I think it was the first matchup in, in 2020. They were coming off of the uh, a really awful game against the Miami Dolphins. Um, maybe the worst game in, in the Shanahan era. Um, and, and Jimmy Garoppolo had been taken out of that game. You know, he was dealing with high ankle sprains and he wasn't himself. And he got in the hook in that one. And, you know, everything seemed lost that season. And they came up with a really good game plan, which was to get the ball into Debo's hands this was before he became a wide back, um, you know, with a lot of quick throws, throws behind the line of scrimmage. And uh, he was six for six, six targets, six receptions, uh, a touchdown. Uh, it, it really worked against the Rams and sort of was able to get Garoppolo back on track. It was able to keep the, the Rams on their heels a little bit. It just seemed like a, a very smart game plan for what they had, what their problems were. Um, and I, I wonder whether they'll do something similar sim, similar uh, today, given Garoppolo needs to get back on track, given that uh, offensive line is uh, coming off a bad game and is inexperienced and has to make up for the fact that its best player, Trent Williams, isn't there. So it, it, they have to have something. I, I'm, I'm kind of eager slash curious to see what they come up with because there are a lot of issues that they have to address but this is a team that's that's done well at addressing those. It's a, been a very creative team over the years, and uh, particularly so when they play the Rams. Matt Barrows joining us here. Matt, I was thinking about you talking about game plan, and, and Kyle generally draws up a pretty good one, but you don't always have to factor in the opposing team or an individual from the opposing team. But Aaron Donald's on the other side, and when you don't have Trent Williams, how do you think they scheme tonight to do their best to neutralize a guy like Aaron Donald? Yeah, it's funny because sometimes they'll have really great games against Aaron Donald, and, and sometimes Aaron Donald will look like himself and just wreck the games. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, the 49ers are always striving to get combination blocks, get, get two guys on one defender, and that sort of opens the door for their running game. Um, and it's tough. Uh, when, A, the, the Rams play this new style, I want to say it's a new style of defense, it's the Vic Fangio style of defense. Um, so if the 49ers are struggling, blame Vic Fangio. Uh, but it, uh, you know, uh, people remember it from the 49ers days. It keeps five big bodies along the line of scrimmage. So you've got that as an issue in getting those combination blocks. And then you've got the fact that Aaron Donald just wrecks those things. I mean, you want to double team him. Uh, but if there's a, you know, a, a high number of defenders on the other line, other side of the line, then um, it, it just makes it more difficult. So it's a good scheme, and it's a great scheme to have when one of your defenders is Aaron Donald. 
Matt Barrow's with us. Bobby Wagner seems to have made a difference so far, obviously helping on that run game or defending it at least. Do you see with Trent Williams out, and even if he was in, uh, George Kittle being uh, used as an offensive lineman a, a lot more tonight? Well, we saw that uh, as soon as Trent Williams left the game um, in Denver. A lot of people were asking, why, why isn't George Kittle getting targeted more? Well, he was having to stay behind, uh, at, at least kind of ch- do some chip blocks. Um, the 49ers were getting killed by those defensive ends in that game. Um, you know, you, you might be able to argue that, okay, the Rams' defensive ends aren't nearly as good as uh, as the, the Broncos were and aren't as good as they were last year when, when Von Miller was there. So um, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I think uh, Jimmy Garoppolo would love to have George Kittle out there as a target. Um, you know, maybe somehow adapt that quick passing game I was describing uh, from a couple of years ago with, with Debo Samuel, and then you do something similar with, with George Kittle. Uh, that could be effective. He hasn't really had a big game in a while. This would be a, a wonderful time to sort of break him out. But, yeah, that's that's what you sort of have to, to, to deal with is if, your uh, your tackles are struggling, then you keep a tight end in to kind of help out on the pass protection. Matt, we've seen this team give up, I don't know, 12 points a game roughly here, best in the NFL. Uh, but Rams, or excuse me, Bears, Seahawks, Broncos, none of those have the offensive abilities of the Rams. I do believe this Niners defense is good. How much more do you think we learn about that group uh, tonight against the Rams offense? Yeah, I mean, every, uh, every outing you're going to learn a little bit more and you know, this one, um, you had the two rain games. I thought that that sort of tamped down the, the scoring a little bit. And uh, Russell Wilson was, uh, and that offense is still kind of finding its feet in, in Denver. Um, this one, I mean, uh, no Odell Beckham, but, uh, you know, they're, they're capable of scoring some points. So th- this will be the best offense, um, uh, an offense that kind of knows itself, unlike the, the, the Broncos kind of figuring itself out so it'll be a great test and uh uh you know i'm i'm always uh, eager to watch uh talano hufanga and I'm, I'm sort of curious you know this is the last week that jimmy ward has to miss with that hamstring injury that he suffered back in training camp when, when he's ready to play again what do you do if you're the 49ers because that that safety duo has been quite good uh, that's uh that's hufanga and gibson back there uh when, when ward is ready to come back some have suggested that he could play uh nickel cornerback so you would have essentially three safeties back there three very uh experienced safeties um and you wouldn't upset the hufanga gibson duo so uh the 49ers are about to have some options in that secondary with uh with jimmy ward and jason Verrett at least uh, practicing with the team and, and perhaps coming back to the active roster. And they'll have some opportunities. You'd think of that secondary four touchdowns, five picks for Matt Stafford so far this season. Matt uh, Matt Barrows of The Athletic with us. Going back to the rushing, the Rams have given up uh, 121 to Buffalo out of the out of the gate and then 65 and 70 uh, rushing yards the last two weeks. In your mind, is this going to be a we're going to load the box up and make Jimmy – uh, beat us and and how do you see the rush distribution going in that backfield i mean um i'll get to the uh, i'll address your the second part of your question first um you know the the word out of denver was that ted and coleman who had just been signed a couple of days ago uh before that game would have played had it not been at altitude he uh he suffers from a sickle cell uh trait and that can be um, problematic uh, at at, uh, at altitude. So he didn't play in that game, but it sounded that it, if that game had been played at sea level, he would have been in there um, because he is very familiar with the, with that offense, having played for it uh, in Atlanta for, for Shanahan uh, in San Francisco with the New York Jets, which is essentially the same offense. So uh, I think he's going to be up. I think it's going to be Jeff Wilson and Tevin Coleman. And, um, you know, the, the whole kind of uh, refrain from coaches was that, oh, boy, Tevin Coleman looks really explosive. Uh, and I know, oh. I know fans are, are, are wondering, hey, is that the same Tevin Coleman that uh, we saw in 2020? Yeah. Um, but uh, I think that they are looking for an explosive element. I don't know if they fully trust Jordan Mason who's the, uh, the, the one healthy rookie on the roster right now. And, 
Marlon Mack is still kind of figuring out the offense. So that's my guess is that it's going to be Jeff Wilson and Tevin Coleman. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the 49ers are going to try to run the ball as much as they can. Um, you know, this is going to be the, this is what I wrote about this morning. This is basically the same defense that they saw last week. Um, it's that Fangio defense, the Rams run it, the Broncos run it, a bunch of teams run it. And, uh, it does a good job against, uh, the 49ers offense, particularly the, uh, the outside zone runs that, uh, they like to run. So until the 49ers can solve that, uh, these teams are going to line up, uh, a loaded box and they're going to make Jimmy Garoppolo hit them over the, over the middle. You, you might recall from the championship game that, uh, Brandon Ayuk had, had, a, had a nice game, had some really, uh, good downfield passes. That's what's open. That's what's available. So Garoppolo and Ayuk and, and Debo Samuel as a wide receiver need to connect on those, and, and that's the way to, to solve this defense is to beat them over the top. You want to read that awesome stuff from Matt Barris. Go to The Athletic uh, online or get the app or both, as uh, I do, and read the best night of coverage you can grab anywhere. We appreciate it. And uh, a rare preview episode with yeah. Matt Barrows. We will uh, – recap not one but uh one and a half games we'll do tonight and uh, uh the following uh follow up as well with you next time we talk appreciate you matt as always all right anytime guys talk to you soon thank you thank you i stumbled there because i